Hey guys, today I'm joined by Lauren. Lauren, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lauren Williams. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist and art therapist. Um, I work as a counselor at a high school and I also work in private practice at Grow Your Potential. Cool. So today I wanted to talk to you about art therapy and it's you know, ways in helping with relationship issues. So when did you start to get into art therapy? What introduced you to it? Um, I had always been an artist growing up and um, I didn't know what I wanted to do after I graduated college. Um, changed my major three or four times and still didn't know. <laughs> Tried out different fields, worked for like three years and knew it was gonna be something therapy related, but didn't quite have a handle. And then I uh, looked into art therapy programs and there's only at the time three, now two certified art therapy schools in California. And one of them just happened to be 20 minutes away from my house. So uh, I put in all the, all the stops to get to go to that school and I did. And I had a great experience. Unfortunately, I was the last, my class was the last art therapy program for Phillips Graduate University. And now we only have two art therapy programs in California. Um, but because they, they, it's canceled still now, they got bought out. Oh, I see. They you changed ownership. Oh, sorry. Do you specialize in a specific type of art or is it just ranging in all different types? Um, I grew up doing painting, but I've since moved to digital, which even I will admit is less sensory, less therapeutic, but it saves on the mess. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I do on the side. And then I've gotten to some crafting, like resin making, jewelry making, things like that. Why do you, or how do you see art therapy as being effective for patients? Um, I think a lot of patients don't quite know how to express their feelings. And um, a lot of the times people come in and they've never known how to express their feelings. Otherwise, they would have done it beforehand. Um, and it's so much easier for some people to, instead of talk about what they're feeling in that moment, to draw a picture of the feeling. Um, access a completely different part of the brain that they wouldn't have otherwise and then talk about the picture rather than um, the feeling. And over time, they're actually able to connect it to you um, and they're able to get stronger in their ability to um, communicate about the feeling directly. And you specialize in relationship issues and talking and working with people with relationship problems. How does the different methods that you incorporate, like brain spotting and art therapy, work into relationship issues? Um, I'm trying to remember the last the last time I used art therapy with a couple um, or in a group setting. Um, I. I use art therapy more so with couples to kind of initiate a conversation that they normally wouldn't have just talking about it. Um, like I could ask a couple to draw a time that they feel connected to each other. And um, that time they're able to like expand on things that they included, um, little details about how a person was received, how um, supportive they were, how they really appreciated the small thing that they included in their drawing. And then it generates like a whole other discussion about how you connect with the person um, that like we could have just talked about, but um, we wouldn't have been able to see all those like nuanced details that they include, they tend to include in art. Um, so I, I like to use art therapy with, with couples. I like to use it more with families and individuals. Personally, that's not like, that's not a rule. That's just me. Um, everybody's got their stick. Um, I know that for 
because relationships, I mean, they don't necessarily have to be romantic. It's just about trying to connect and build a connection with another person, which can be family members, friends, romantic partners. Um, I, I think I lost my train of thought with that one, but uh, the, the point is our therapy, at least when used with groups, of, at least for me, it's every art therapist kind of has a different style, just like there are many types of art in the world. Um, but for me, I use art therapy as a conversation piece. This is my long-winded answer. <laughs> Let's see. Do, have you seen the different ways that these relationship issues affect people of different ages, like adolescents or adults, pediatrics? Um, yes, I, 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 if I could like summarize a like really frequent theme that I see come up a lot, it's the ability to, um, hold on, I, I'll give an example first. <laughs> um, I give couples a lot the example of, um, one one person asks to pass the salt and the other person gets mad and says what 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 why are you asking me that question it's not about the salt um they're not hearing just like the uh the question they're thinking in their mind they're they're interpreting things in a different way um sometimes we see things see what people say to us based off of our own beliefs and our own insecurities and that's our stuff um, that we're responsible for, but maybe that person wasn't hearing, can you pass the salt? They were hearing, um, you don't like the way I season food, or you think my cooking is bad and you need salt to cover up the taste or whatever it may be, but they're overreacting to something someone said that isn't what the person said. Um, and I think regardless of age, the like art of active listening and actually hearing what um, the person across from you is saying and not filtering it to um, your own interpretations. I mean, that's a lifelong practice, but it's something that um, I think that a lot of people who, I won't say a lot of people, um, that, that many people coming to therapy will often struggle with. Um, I, I think it's a normal issue just because like we all come with our own insecurities and baggage and we're going to see the world in our own unique lens. Um, we just need to be like kind of careful and mindful of how we're interpreting things that people are saying and actually listening to what people are saying um, instead of kind of going on the defensive. How do you help someone that say isn't very receptive to couples therapy maybe it was the partner's idea to do it but the other person really isn't in it they're not really speaking how do you help them work through it um well first i just want to be curious about kind of what what turns them off to therapy um what messages they might have received about therapy um and then i really want to get them involved in the process because i'm not going to sit there and try and um say that i'm that i know another person better than they do um they're the they're the client they know what they need um they have their own goals and wants and i really just try and get people like involved and collaborated in the process um, see that this is this isn't me telling you that you're bad or that your feelings are wrong. This is like, oh, um, you got a problem, and I'm curious about the problem, and let's all team to team up together to try and find the solution. Um, I find that people are more receptive to that approach. Mm -hmm. And you know, kind of going out of the couples relationships when we're diving into friendships there's bound to be you know toxic relationships especially in 
high school, how would you, or do you have any words of encouragement for someone that is trying to get out of that toxic relationship or any red flags of a toxic relationship? Um, yes, I'm just thinking of which one. <laughs> um, I like to think of, I remember this, um, We don't, I mean, we don't seek out relationships necessarily for the benefit. Like we're just kind of trying to connect with other humans and that itself is the benefit. Um, is that like feeling of connection and being, um, being with a person and getting to know them. But if you can sincerely look at your friendships and go through like each friend in your life and ask yourself, is this person benefiting my life? Are they enriching it? Are they adding to it? Um, if the answer is no, then that's that's just a that's a moment to stop and really consider whether this friendship is worth continuing. Um, this people are on their own journey, and sometimes um, that friend isn't right for you at the time. They might be later. They might not be. Um, Sometimes people are going through their own stuff and that's no fault of theirs. We're all going through our stuff. Um, maybe your stuff and their stuff aren't compatible at the moment. Um, but I think really being able to understand your values and what you want in a friend where, um, where you feel supported and valued and that your feelings matter to the other person if your friends right now aren't checking off those boxes, um, you know, you, you kind of have to ask yourself, is that friend worth pursuing? Because you can only give your time and energy to so many people. And maybe that time and energy would be better spent on other people who would value your time, value you as a person. Yeah, and on the regards of family relationships I myself have struggled with familial relationships and everything that goes with that and I know that some people like me it was pretty difficult to talk to them about it because you don't want to add any strain to the relationship you know you want to preserve what was already there those values how would you help someone talk to their parents or what would you say to someone that, or to help them kind of, you know, step over, make that first step, tell their parents or their siblings that there's an issue and that they want to overcome it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've encountered that a lot as well. Um, I think intention is really important, the way that you to kind of present the issue there's a big difference between going up to someone and like outright yelling and like you do this and go into attack mode um the other person has no choice but to get defensive but if you come at the conversation of love and like building the relationship the other person's going to see that and they're going to they're going to say like oh this person's like putting in an effort i want to put in an effort too to listen and understand and work out this problem um I know for, I mean, even just personally, I've really respected when family members or myself have just been kind of outright and um, just said like, hey, can we talk? Um, start with an I feel statement. You've probably heard that before. Um, I feel blank when you blank and the reason being, if you start with an accusation, like a you statement, they're, again, they're going to get defensive. Um, and also they can't argue against your feelings. <laughs> um, and just um, be mindful. And like, again, like 
the intent of the conversation is always about love. Um, and if the parent isn't receiving that, um, I always I always like to validate more during the conversation and just like acknowledge like, okay, you're doing well um, or you're doing this right. And <laughs> I still have this issue. A lot of times, and this is the hard part, a lot of the times family members are not ready to hear it or um, they're not willing to change, which is kind of the saddest of all. Um, many, many will because they want a good relationship with you and they will make the effort because a stronger relationship with you is worth it. Um, for the parents who just aren't ready to make the change or not willing, uh, it is a process. It took me until like age 24 <laughs> um, for my own parents, but um, those parents are kind of, it's, it's a process of grieving where you kind of have to accept that until this person makes the choice to change, you cannot change them. That was a very long-winded answer. I don't know. If <laughs> Right. I don't know if that actually answered what you were hoping for. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I notice that some people may be in relationships that are damaging or harmful, whether mentally or physically. And sometimes it's hard to notice the signs. And I know that it looks different for everybody, but do you know of any you know, common signs or things to look out for when, you know, someone's acting different or, I don't know, ways to tell if someone is going through something in terms of relationship issues? Um, I can think of like warning signs of codependency, which can just mean like getting, perhaps getting a little too emotionally involved or getting into perhaps an unhealthy relationship um, would be if a person is investing all of their time into a person, um, ignoring friends or hobbies in order to be with just that person um, or other relationships as well, um, ignoring their own needs for the sake of the other person. Um, Codependency looks like a lot like bending over backwards, uh, minimizing their own feelings or saying like, I'm not, essentially saying I'm not important, that other person is important. Um, irritability, general unhappiness or like anger or snappiness with the people around them. I haven't reviewed this question in a while. <laughs> it's a good refresher, but I'm sure there's a big one I'm missing. I can't think of any that relate to high school. Most of the things I'm thinking of relate more to substance use, which I hope is not relatable to high school. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put, I'm gonna leave my answer there and add a, and put a period at the end. So, <laughs> well, oh, and one thing I'm actually very interested, or you know, have a lot of questions about, but I've always wondered if someone's first love is something that can. I wouldn't say breed issues, but. Like oftentimes, you know the phrase honeymoon phase where, yeah. Yeah. how does, would you say that that phase is healthy or, uh, I don't know, just, could you give There's me nothing, um, insight about the, the signs behind the honeymoon phase? 
I don't think there's anything healthy or unhealthy about it. It's kind of a natural phase. Um, you're getting lots of oxytocin and dopamine. Um, we naturally get a kind of high from feeling loved and feeling like we're important enough to another person that we're like valued by them and we're um yeah it, it's it's a lot of like it's a lot of chemicals it's a lot of um just riding the high of something new um it's very natural most people experience it um realistically it only I don't I don't have a source for this I'm just remembering realistically it only it on average it only happens for like three months um so for anybody saying that they want to marry the person after month two I you know uh maybe wait <laughs> um that's not to say that problems can't show up before then, but sometimes you're just, your brain is just so flooded by those endorphins that um, you can't really make as rational decisions as you otherwise would have. Um, so it's not unhealthy. It's just kind of something to write out and enjoy and um, also kind of keep your wits about you because uh, you're your ability to be rational about that person will likely be impaired. Mm -hmm. And lastly, do you have any just general advice for someone that's going through a tough relationship or, you know, trying to seek help, but is too afraid to ask? Um, I'll, I'll go with the, the person who needs help. Um, my help is always available if you're willing to ask. And we hear this a lot, but asking for help is never a weakness. If it was a weakness, it wouldn't be so hard and we wouldn't want to do it as much or it wouldn't, it wouldn't challenge us as much to ask for help. It's actually a huge sign of strength to be able to be vulnerable enough for another person. Um, to let them in and that's that's ultimately a what's going to that like vulnerability to connect with another human being and share a part of your life with a therapist or um, whatever mental health profession you professional you find um, that just showcases your strength and your ability to connect with others in your relationships um, so cultivate that Go ask for help. Go to strengthen that muscle. Be open. Be honest. Um, your relationships will benefit from it, and you'll benefit from it obviously because you're getting the help that you need. On that note, thank you so much, Lauren, for talking with me today.